Hey, and welcome to the Crew Podcast. We are the hottest podcast rocking right now. We are currently looking for six amazing hosts to join our family for season two that will kick off February the 1st, 2024. If you're looking for an opportunity to allow your voice, your perspective, and your brand to be heard around the world and seen around the world, then join the crew podcast. Aspiring Authors Magazine is a founding sponsor for Da Crew Podcast. Get featured inside the magazine and allow your voice to be heard around the world. Aspiring Authors Magazine is an international magazine founded in May of 2020 by Queen Angela. Get featured. Hey. One, two, one, two. Ah, ah, here we go. It's my time to rise. It's my time to shine. It's my time to live. It's my Tonight I'm in a romantic mood. Yeah. Let's take a shower. Shower together. I'll wash your body. You wash mine. Yeah. A lot of time we think that things don't happen um, because they don't happen to us. And then when we hear about them, it seems like it's also real. But it has been going on for years, decades. And I'm just... I, I'm, I'm just at awe of some of the things that I come across. Um but I don't put anything past anyone anymore just because of what I've been learning on this journey, um, working with the Free Texas Campaign and um, these individuals at TDCJ. So today, y'all, um, like every Monday, um, I take this opportunity to allow um, those that are um, incarcerated and those that have been incarcerated an opportunity to come on and share. Um, they can share about their their case. They can share about their situations, um, their living situations, their mental situations. They can do encouragement, you know, whatever they're led to do. Um, it is their 30 minutes and um, I give them the flow. So um, that's why I went on early a little early so I could get all of the logistics out of the way so that when the caller calls in, um, they'll be able to um, utilize the platform for their whole 30 minutes. Y'all, the whole gist of what I have been doing for the last year and a half um, 
is to bring awareness to a lot of the corruption in the state of Texas that have plagued the judicial system and have caused um, a lot of individuals to be wrongfully and overly incarcerated and have ruined lives. Um, of course, you know, um, kids are affected by this. And then you, we wonder why our kids suffer from different illnesses, um, mental illnesses, and various things. Um, trauma. And this trauma is passed down. And it is passed down from generation to generation. Um, so I'm here doing the things that I do because I want change. And in order for change to come, I have to change. And I have to change those things around me. So change has to start with us individually first. And when we begin to change, then things around us will begin to change and to line up accordingly. You know, decades upon decades upon decades, um, we as brown people have been wrongfully incarcerated, overly incarcerated, and just abused in so many different ways and afflicted trauma upon us in so many different ways. But we can no longer blame people for what they've done to us in the past. You know, we're, we're in a place now where we're able to move past all that and make use of our now, our current situations and do the best that we can do. So I'm excited to be able to be working with these individuals because the state of Texas has truly written off these these people um and if you look at if, if y'all have been following me and have been following some of these cases and checking out some of these videos these clips you can kind of get an understanding and you'll see a pattern you will see a pattern where there has been corruption you'll see a pattern where there's been um definitely falsification of documents and so many other things and it is not like these people can sit and figure out, you know, let, let's come up with a plan and come against the judicial system. No, because Texas is huge. Some of the, these inmates do not know each other. They're on different um, facilities all across um, Texas. And, and you can Google the facilities and see how far apart these, these individuals are. So that's why I'm trying to get people to understand we're not conspiring. We're not coming together. We're not plotting. We're not coming up with no, no, none of that. These are people that are going through this and they're sharing their story. They're, they're bringing light to situations that are happening within the state of Texas, within the judicial system and within the TDCJ, the parole board and many other entities that's connected to these entities here that I just named. And again, I tell people, if you trace the money, you'll find out exactly what is going on. Because in the midst of this, there's definitely some money being transferred. And you have people, you look at, and another thing, red flags. We, we got to start looking at these red flags with these politicians. Because they they definitely show red flags. I think this is my caller calling in. Hello. So, okay, uh, y'all, I apologize. But um, again, um, like I said, that was um, our guest for today um, calling in. So I, I wanted to go ahead 
and get you guys to go ahead and share this out in your circle of influence while I bring him up and allow him to introduce himself and um, share however he's led on today. So, guests, if you would, please um, introduce yourself. Um, tell those that are tuned in um, who you are and where you're calling from. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Williams, and I'm uh, calling from uh, John B. Colony Union in Kennedy, Texas. My business is the old six. Um, I'm uh, currently a prisoner here, and I would like want to talk about different things as far as what's going on around the prison reform system and different things for us to better make our prisoners. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, where would you like to start? Um, like I say, the floor is yours for you to share however you are led to share. If you want to talk about your case, how you ended up in TDCJ, if you want to talk about the current um, issues, um, because I know that there are a lot of things um, that are going on within TDCJ. Um, just from talking to other um, inmates, um, I have just been seeing a, a influx in suicides and various other things. So, how 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 you want to share today? What, what, what would you like to talk about? Oh, you... uh, I, mean, I can start from the basics and we can go from from there. Um, like about myself, I mean, everybody know I've finished uh, fifty five years for a murder, an accident, of a murder. I actually uh, killed one of my girlfriends by accidental, and um, it was kind of like you know, I was high off of drugs. Partying and the lifestyle I have, parts from prison. I've been going on already 20 years. That I was kind of partying and I was missing the lifestyle and gang banging and all this stuff. Um, kind of led me to being incarcerated. And I wish I could go back and change, but you know, the way the court system is, it's like if you can't play something back that you've done and you just got like learn how to do it and have to move forward, you know. Uh, and as far as that, since I've been here, I have learned and I help a lot of guys down here to try to deal with different things I have dealing with. So like I said, I've been gone already 20 years and I've been fighting this because sometimes even though an accident that leads to like people automatically assume and people like this on you, family, friends, uh, like they, they, they leave you alone and they don't mess with you and talk to you. So it's kind of hard on the prisoners a lot of times. And, I mean, personally, I've been out here, I went through a lot of like emotional distress, bondage. Uh, I was mad at myself because like, I accident and you didn't want to really try to do something, you do it. And like I said, that from being under the influence of drugs and alcohol, you become a different person. And over the course of time, I feel like a lot of influence, like, like, it's like drug and alcohol, a lot of people come to different people. And a lot of Texas prison, like I said, it has been a lot of dying. And they got to do a lot of drugs in here, and everybody's like, you know, the mindsets of different individuals and stuff, you know what I mean? And to me personally, I'm like, I want to change the prison culture, and that's why I want to embrace the youngsters nowadays, you know, and change the prison culture about that and the awareness of people out there in the world, the free world, about what we want to do and how to deal with different emotions, stress, violence, and all this different thing about how the people think about because the prison, you know, because a lot of people don't feel like they can come back and change because one point of time, when I come back and change, I feel like that I was, I was stuck down here, yeah, I was going to die down here because, like, I, that's the point I pushed everybody away. I think I was suicidal. sound you sound young mr williams um may i ask how old were you when um you um 
when you were first incarcerated? And how long have you been down? Well, I was first caught in 24 and I'm 44 right now. So back in 20 years. And uh, it's like, you know, I feel I'm young, but I, I mean, uh, I'm not young. I wish I were. I'm still the age of pain and growing up and, and growing up in prison. You know what I mean? Right. It's kind of like, well, uh, yeah, it's like um, a lot of youngsters now. When I first found out, I was a lot of like youngsters lost and I came to help because they like, look in their eyes and then there's like a newness, but. When I first came, there was a lot more violence. It's kind of changed a little now, and it's like survival tactics. A lot of people, you know, they don't know how to deal with themselves or the emotions they deal with. A lot of guys like friends that give away a lot of time now. A lot of people have these violent crimes, and, and it's hard on them. And they are going to drugs, alcohol, and you know, unnecessary stuff up for them. You know what I mean? And they're losing their feelings. It's not a suicide race out here. Like, I never think. I didn't have like like Sandy's home. You know, they killed themselves, and I was, like, I was talking to them, trying to blow them up, but they're worried about the world. Cause family members don't send them money, don't support them, or help them out, or biggest thing is like uh, they have a uh, you know friend or companion. I don't know I moved on, or I got friends with them. You know, they don't know how to deal with it. And, right. It's a hard thing to deal with. And then I, I get my like some of these guys about like what I want to be like, like are you trying to like okay, well, you can't get to kill somebody that you love. Yeah. How would you want to deal with this and live with this, you know, right? And you actually tell Kylie over and over, how would you want to deal with it? And I went through some self hatred moments today, like, is it normal? Because even though I say it's action, it's like, I know it was action, I didn't even do nothing. You know what I mean? Of course, with like, that's what I think, but society's way of painting the picture is like, I intentionally did it, it wasn't the case, but the you know, drugs and alcohol and different things. And I've been fighting like, the struggle since I've been here, you know what I mean? And it's like, is it hard with courses? Yes, yes, it is hard. A lot of guys don't understand that. So I get that to try to tell them, look at me. I still have to wake up with a smile on my face. And it took some moments, but you know what I said? I didn't, I doubt it, God. God has came in my life to change on my family and friends, people want my support, people want back to me. I ain't saying that I'm easy. Most of the person I am, I can get back to other people. You know what I mean? Right. So since you, um, and, you know, since you've been incarcerated, um, how has your environment been? Well, I guess uh, when I first came down, like, World War II, got this reach, uh, when I first came to this unit, we were about it, and like a gateway unit, understanding, uh, I drew folks, like, I mean, it was like awesome beating the inmates up and a lot of stuff like that. So when I first came, I had to adapt to my environment and you had to get in that mindset. And where I was at, it was people with the company called the G3, anybody with labor section, the whole building. The people got to be getting stabbed, killed, you know, like thrown off. It's not three years since thrown off the road, a little body. And like, I remember the first day I got to be at um, the site. I think a dude get stabbed at a Shelly's point. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like, wow, like, how do you, how you learn from this? Like, wow, like, what am I about to do? And the dude was, was stabbing a guy. He looked at me, and I was kind of like, in prison, like he said, I didn't see nothing type of, you know what I mean? And it's kind of crazy that you don't want to witness, not like that, but that's just part of the environment that you deal with. And it's kind of like, wow, like, when I asked myself, man, what I, what I did, what I got myself in a wild game, like, what? Where am I at? You know, and, and this is my new home, and this is how I deal. And when things I'm there, they're constantly getting trouble. Like, I'm getting caught with phones after phones, fights, the gang activity, the bunch of different stuff that I shouldn't have been participating in. Like, it was just surviving my environment. Everything you think is right is wrong with them. And you know, it's like, it's not normal. You see 50 year olds still like trying to fist fight. Like, who does that? You know, who do you think that's possible in the real world? A lot of people don't understand that. And that's, that's the normal to solve it. The situation is really not. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's just the environment we live in, you know? Wow. So, those that are tuned in today, um, what would be your message to them? Um, well, you know, I would say to ladies and gentlemen everywhere, you know, if they act crazy, you can change, change by how you look at situations, change how you, you focus on yourself, and change how, like, whatever a situation is about, having a, a foundation for God first, 
Right. I'm sitting here. I'm I'm sitting here listening to you and I I hear I hear you at the beginning talk about how you were um into drugs and into gang banging and doing all that. And now your whole it's like you did a 180, like something clicked in you, something changed in you, something made you want to, you know, do different to see different. You know, and I tell people in order to see change, we have to be that change and um, something has to change. So I, I, I hear you um, through this process, through this journey. Um, what has um, been available to you through TDCJ or if you've had to do all of your rehabilitation on your own? I mean, um, the first, the first, I mean, he just started. I mean, I, I, I can say, even though I was negative, my mouth took the past. I got a couple of trades. I got a, like a bunch of certificates. You know, I got college. Um, it seemed like we had to self help and do it ourselves. And by me having so much time, I couldn't really participate in some of the other classes that they offered. You got to be with the body, with the role. Uh, you got to be in something like that. So they offer a certain trade at the beginning. Everything else got to be done out, or you got to do it yourself. But recently, they have a lot of programs now that they're more focused on individuals changing like from a bunch of William self help but like a bunch of self help class and teach a person that's going on then it's better ways and they they actually implement before it was doing that. But as we can see people doing lately, I have a lot of classes and they have people like jobs out there which are all types of different things that help change, especially when we got the caps. We got the caps and kind of change the format of how you do time, you know what I mean? Wow. Judy Williams said, keep your head up. Diana Rivas, stay focused, kinfolk, love, egg. Thank you. Thank you for the shot. Thank you. Well, I definitely um, I appreciate you um, coming on and sharing and being transparent and allowing people to see your transformation um, because, you know, the state of Texas um, have truly failed a lot of people um, when it comes to the judicial system, um, the parole board, as well as um, TDCJ. Um, I've had so many complaints on the food. I've had so many complaints on the living conditions and medical and just various things that, you know, just basic human rights that just need to be observed. And, um, it, it just saddens. It just saddens my heart. But um, I, I, I take it. <laughs> um, I don't take it lightly. Um, I, I, I'm constantly writing um, these legislators. I'm constantly writing um, the executive directors and letting these. Every time somebody reports something to me, I'm reporting it to them, and um, I'm, I'm tagging everybody in emails so that they know that hey, y'all need to address this. And um, I'm, I'm pleading to those that are listening, um, those that will hear this as a replay, um, make sure that you are reaching out to your legislators. Make sure that you're reaching out to your representative, to your sorry governor, um, Abbott, because he is a he is a he is full of crap. Um, every it seems like every bill, every law, everything that come up before him he wants to veto it anything that has to do with the judicial system he wants to veto it and and, it, and it's sad because half of you guys have been railroaded um first of all with these over sentencing and you look at I, I look at some of these cases I hear some of these cases and I think about 
if you were in another state, um, you would be on probation. You would have time served, or you know, like ten years. You know what I mean? There's just this different stuff. Like I'm sitting here. I mean, you you talk about a man that killed um, George Floyd. He got 12 years in federal prison. 12 years in federal prison. You know, and it, it's countless others. But it's just sad because we look at um, the attorney general in the state of Texas just got um, acquitted from being a, impeached when he should have been impeached. This man having a whole affair. And, and the mistress comes into the state capitol and his wife is a senate senator sitting on the senate floor and they stop the lady from even going to even testify but y'all brought her there y'all let the world see that she exists so i mean they they really don't make no sense but i'm sick of them throwing the the the, the can down the road and and and, and tossing over rocks and and leaving stuff unturned um, I am very, I, I'm a very strong faith believer, and I believe that, you know, God didn't drop this in my lap, because I'm all the way in South Carolina. Um, I, I've been doing this for over a year and a half, all the way from South Carolina. I never set foot in the state of Texas, don't know nothing about Texas, but this was dropped in my lap, and I've been going hard. And, and trying to do the best that I can to bring awareness to this. I'm telling you, I'm doing a project right now in school. I, I'm working on my master's. And I'm going to spread your message down here with a lot of guys out here, too, to get up and walk into a lot of guys that have stories that need to be heard. And that's one thing we're not being heard. And like anything's been hidden, we said secluded behind ourselves. You know what I mean? And that's what's going on down here, you know? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be depending on you. To working with y'all, working out well, I'm definitely going to be depending on you to get some more guys from over in your area to um, come on and share and, and see what, like I say, in January, I will be in San Antonio. Uh, we're going to be doing a rally, um, a march. We're going to be marching from one location to City Hall. We're going to rally at City Hall, and then um, we're going to go back to that location where we started and have the community event uh, where we're going to have different organizations out there that can help um, different families with different things, depending on what it is, because it's so much that's affecting our our, 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 our families. You know, people don't understand that this is it's a systematic um, injustice and, and racism um, that's taking place, whether people want to believe it and accept it or not. You know, it's just another form of slavery, and it's time for it to end. It is definitely time for it to end. And um, I, I'm just grateful for the platform and the opportunity because whoever thought I would be doing this, um, definitely all the way from South Carolina, all the way down in Texas and trying to make a difference. But I, I couldn't sit by and allow um, this to be dropped in my lap and, and people to be going through this and not do something. That, that, that was just like, I don't see how people do it. You know, I, I'm I'm appalled at you know a lot of the people in the state of Texas that are not doing anything, that they're just sitting and just allowing this happening. They're not going to the voting polls, they're not voting, they're not going down to the legislature, they're not knocking on these people's doors and holding these people accountable. You got to hold these people accountable because if you keep letting them toss the, the can down the river, they're gonna keep on doing it. And if they're not doing, you elect them in office, they're not doing what you what you need them to do, get them out of office. That's what they're doing in Chicago. They're not playing with these people no more. See, what has happened is, see, people don't understand. We're not the minority anymore. We are the majority. And until we realize that, and until we begin to move like we are that, we're going to continue to go through the same phase and the same circle, and they're going to keep trying to run the same game on us. <laughs> they try to give us religion they try to give us all this other different stuff to keep us side track nah we hip to all that now so you can't hide a lot of stuff from us now huh. that's what we need to wear this and bring our message out to everybody and get our message out people be heard because that's what I think they expect from us not our message you know what I mean and that's what a lot of people in Texas think that's what we need we need to get our message out and I mean, prison in general. I can't just say Texas in general. I mean, it's about other prisons, but I'm just going by. Yeah, what it's, happened. it's here. It is. 
It's I, everywhere. I, I, I the forest. It's everywhere. Like it's everywhere. You know, I I, 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 I'm connected to other people that do the same thing that I do, and a lot of these people are the, are the reason why I got into this. Like, there's a young lady that's on a network that I'm on. She every Sunday. Sunday. This is all she talked about. Last night she was talking about um, some guys down in Alabama um, and all the stuff that's going on in Alabama. We talk about how how y'all state, the state of the good old state of Texas, the good old county, Harris County, just um, got eleven million dollars to ship inmates to Mississippi. Why? When you could be using that money to do reform. Why, when you can be using that money to, to reform the prison system, to reform the parole board, and to correct all this wrong that y'all have done to these people? Like, no, no, really? No, I about kids in prison. They spend more money on, like, the pigs and the cattle and don't give us AC. Like, these people were dying during the summertime when they had this record breaking heat. They, 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 they said they spent more money on the animals compared to giving us money for the AC system. A lot of units don't have AC systems. So they got they all get, their priorities they messed up. But people keep voting these same people back in office. Ain't no way. Ain't no way these same people would be getting back in office. Now, if, if man, I'm telling you, if I was in the state of Texas, I'd be running for somebody's seat. They wouldn't be sitting there, keep getting back in the office and doing the same thing. For what? When my loved one's sitting in prison and in and, and, about having heat stroke now a young lady over there in um hobby the hobby unit she said the coldest water they can get is out the toilet in the summertime who drinking out the toilet man please that's crazy you don't you don't you don't put people through man Come on, man. We living in the 21st century. We're not living back in those them days. And if if Greg Abbott think that this is this is how you this is how people that break the law should live. No, you breaking all of you violating all their human rights. And we as family members, we got to speak up. We on the outside. When they tell us something is going on, we got to document it. We got to send letters to these people and 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 tag people in the email so people can see the paper trail because that's what I do. And they can't say I didn't get it. So when the ombudsman respond and say, "Oh, you already tagged so and so," this is the person that yeah, you see, everybody know. I ain't playing with them. I ain't playing with them. And that's what we got to get to a point to where these people know that we are serious. And it's not a game. When it comes down to your loved one, it shouldn't that's be all. a game. It should not be a game. That's all we have for us to be treated right and you know, have the right opportunity to everybody else. Like, to be civil. Like, you know, get you and others committed your crimes and came here. And, you know, I'm not going to speak for everybody because this is bad acting. You know, they just, this is how it goes. But for other people that are here and trying to better themselves, I mean, that's what we ask, you know. And they don't seem to want to do that. And they, gotta, they, they got to, they got to, they have to have a system in place where they can identify who wants to be rehabilitated and who don't. I mean, you can identify. Now you 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 ain't got to keep pressuring nobody to do nothing. If somebody want to do it, they gonna do it. So that's how you determine. That's how you determine who wants to to be rehabilitated because everybody can be rehabilitated. It's a proven fact. And then you talk about all these juveniles, and then you talk about the age of these people when they're getting incarcerated. Most of these people are getting incarcerated under the age of twenty five. And under the age of 25, they 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 not even fully their mind is not fully developed. It's been proven. 16 to 25, and they act like okay, we spend 20 years in the system. It's a proven fact that anybody spent over 20 years in the system that you can change and you keep what's not there. They want to utilize the parole system, and they put their bills after bills. A lot of people like they got to take people down here to be trying to fight for our rights for that. But these people been locked up on too much time for crimes they committed. Right, other states, if you do the same thing, you only get 12 years, five years, or you can come home for 15 years. Like, Texas is not going to suffer with that. You know what I mean? Like, it is, I'm going on 20 years and counting, and it's like, I mean, I want a second chance to life. That's all I ask for. That's what I pray for every day. I want to be able to leave behind my legacy, and, you know, I, I grew up. I used to be kind of uh, messed up, real bad person, but I kind of grew up and changed. And when I went out of life, I wanted something better. You know, I want to be able to get back and even, you know, tell other people about 
my struggles in my life cycle, so they won't have to go through it, you know? And That's it. Like, like um, I became a young man, I'm turning to an old man, you know? Back problems, knee problems, you know, all the type of stuff that I shouldn't be having, you know, down here for the kids' condition here. But, you know, it's just... I think it's, it should be a better way or a different system in place, but you know, and that's what we got to work on together. You know what I mean? That's it. That's it. Well, I tell you, um, I'm definitely, um, I'm going to keep kicking the can around until somebody answer that door and do what they're supposed to do because it's time for these people to be held accountable. They can enjoy their families. They can enjoy and create memories. It's time for some of these people to come home. You have one minute left. And be able to. Okay, um, and, uh, I, have, I have one minute. I'm about to have to go. I mean, I'm going to have time to give them my address. Anybody want the right support? I'm looking for all the support, help. Anybody that's interested in my story or, you know, want to get to know more about me, I can have uh, my sister give you the information and how to how to contact me or phone if you have it up there. And, you know, the that, I mean, Thanks for the opportunity to be able to express myself and even I will be referring other people to you. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I thank you. Thank you for your support system. Well, we definitely going to okay. be sharing um, his information. Of course, y'all know if y'all want to write them, um, you have to write to the uh, P.O. Box. I think it's P.O. Box 99. And I want to say it's in um, Austin, Texas. Um, but I will definitely um, make sure I get that posted in the comment section. Um, so you guys can um, write him. Um, I thought I had his TDCJ number. Um, Thank you for using Securus. I don't Beautiful. have it, but I will get it um, and share that out. Um, I like to share that out, too, for those that may want to write, um, may want to check out his case and see how you may help. Um, I tell everybody, you don't know what the next person's expertise is. Um, someone may be a, um, someone may be a, um, a legal aide. They may be a lawyer. They may be, um, a researcher and they may be able to assist with his case. So you never know. So I always, um, like to, um, um, Make sure that um, we're sharing this out in our circle and um, that we share all the information in case people want to um, dive in and um, do a little more research and um, see how they can help. Um, again, I thank you guys for all of your support. Um, make sure that you are following us over on YouTube, um, Everything Free Texas Campaign. Um, of course, y'all know y'all can find me on the Crew Podcast. I am the visionary of the Crew Podcast. I'm also the visionary of Aspiring Authors Magazine, as well as AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. Y'all, my whole desire across all of my platforms is to be the change that I desire to see in this world. And in order to see change, y'all, we have to be the change. So change starts and finish with you. So um, with that being said, y'all have a great week. It's Monday. Um, it's the first Monday of the last month of this year. Y'all can finish strong, and this can be the best finish to 2023. Um, everything that could have, would have, should have went wrong, we can't change it. It's done. It's over with. It's the past now. Um, we're in the present, and we're looking forward to aligning to all that that has been purposed for us according to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I appreciate you guys, and y'all have a great rest of your day.